Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for joining us this afternoon uh, on this uh, webinar about how to transform your client journey. My name is Dan, and I'm the chief designer at Doc Vinci, and also the head of marketing at Next Gen Planners. But we're not going to talk about us today. We're going to talk about you guys and how you can transform uh, that client journey that your clients go on, and also looking at your client's experience overall uh, as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my slides. Hopefully, if I could just get, if you can, I think the chat's enabled, but if it's not, if you can just leave me a, a, a thumbs up in the Q&A, or Emily raised a hand, which I assume means that the slides are visible, I think, um, which is a good sign. So that's awesome. Okay, yes. Yeah, so today we are looking at how to transform your client journey. And when we say client journey, uh, we're not talking about their journey in life. We're talking about the journey that they go on when they're working with you uh, as a financial planner and uh, all the different things that they get included in that journey and the different touch points uh, along the way. So what we are going to do today is we'll go through some ideas for those different touch points. Um, we're not going to look at every single touch point in that client journey because that would take us days to do and also everybody has different touch points with their clients what we're going to do is we're just going to give you some ideas based on work that we've done based on work that we've heard from uh, the firms that we work with on ways that you can really impress clients at those different touch points and also how to transform those moments uh, to make sure that it's a better client experience for the people that you work with as well what we're not going to do today as well is we're not going to tell you how you should do every step of the journey or any step of the journey. This is not a, you should be doing this or you need to be doing this. It's just ideas. And what we'll hopefully convince you of at the end is that these ideas deserve at least to have a think about and maybe even implement in your business. But I don't want you to think that today I'm telling you the best way to do things or anything like that, because everybody's uh, client experience and every process for every financial planning business is completely different to everybody else's. So today, what we will mention probably a few times is the word friction. And I've spoken about this a little bit in my in previous stuff that we've done. Uh, and, and it's not the scientific term for friction, uh, although it means vaguely the same thing. Uh, and what we're meaning here is anything that is either slowing down or is stopping or is reducing or is making that client experience worse. So, for example, before they start working with you, it could be things that put them off working with you whilst they're working with you. It whilst your clients are working with you, it could be things that annoy them about the things that you do or subconsciously they don't understand. And then afterwards, it could be things that you've said that they don't agree with or something like that. In this case, what we're doing today is we're looking at those touch points and we're saying we want to eradicate a friction from those different touch points. And you'll this will all make sense a little bit when we start talking about the different touch points. If we can think about the other side, the hero of this situation or this made up story that we're going through here is communication. And we all talk about how important communication is, but it is especially important in client journeys. One of the biggest reasons that a client won't work with you or is not happy or they don't understand the value of what you actually provide is that you don't communicate those things effectively. So it could be communicating how long a client needs to wait before you're going to build something, or it could be communicating what something means to a client. All of these things might seem very obvious to you, but for the clients, they're not obvious at all. Uh, so what we need to do is just make sure that communication is the central thing in everything uh, that we're aiming for. And what I mentioned before is, is, is true as well. Everybody's client journey is different. Everybody, the financial planning business down the road, they will have a different client journey to the one that you offer to your clients. And although the service that we all provide is vaguely similar to everybody else's, the different client journeys are what makes your business unique from everybody else's because you offer something that nobody else does and the different things that you do amongst that client journey uh, as well. But, and I said that, but even given what I've just said, is that everybody has the same kind of vague areas and the same kind of timeline of how they work uh, with their clients. And I've put it into three stages and you look at, if you're looking at this and thinking that's not mine, then Apologies, you can talk to me afterwards and we'll look at the different uh, different ways that you work with your clients. But there tends to be three stages of how people work with clients uh, and the different touch points along that journey. And the first one 
is what I've called pre-planning. You could think of this as pre-onboarding or whatever you want to call it. It's basically before you start to do any work for clients. Uh, and that is where a client is starting to experience you. It's starting to get the feel for how you do things uh, and how you work and how you communicate with them. The middle stage or the second stage is the planning stage. So this is when the client is becoming used to the service that you provide. Uh, they're not completely embedded in yet, but they're certainly becoming used to it. They understand the way that you work and they understand the different touch points, et cetera, et cetera. And then the third stage is the post planning. So if we could think of this as the after you've completed the financial plan, after you've implemented everything, after everything has gone through and most financial planning businesses work on an ongoing basis with their clients. So we could think about this as that part. I know I said post planning. I know that planning never really stops, but I, I'm thinking more in terms of that initial planning that you're doing with your clients. And in this case, the client has had their experience of your service. They're kind of used to it uh, by now, uh, but they're not completely lost. If, if you want to change that client's experience that they get, you can change this down the line. Uh, and also in this case, this is where they're most likely to either refer you or not refer you, which again, we'll talk a little bit about at the end, uh, but that's why this is so important as well, because these people are the ones who are going to tell others about you. So let's have a look at some different touch points and we'll work on some ideas uh, of what we've seen as well. So the first one is, I would imagine everybody has this touch point in their uh, client journey that they work with with clients. And that is that the client gets in touch via phone call or email or booking form or whatever it is. Uh, and they have that kind of initial conversation with you over the phone or by email or whatever it might be, just to say what their problem is, why they got in touch and what they're looking for from you effectively. And what I've done on the right hand side for every single touch point is saying what everybody else is doing and then underneath a transformed experience of what I think you could do to make this step, step better. So what everybody else is doing, and I'll say everybody else loosely there, but what most people are doing is that the client then gets passed to the team to book in the next meeting and then they engage in diary tennis. And what I mean by diary tennis is it's that case where you speak to, uh, uh, or the team speaks to a client and say, can you do this date? And the client comes back and says, no, I've got the kids that day. Can you do this one? And then you say, no, the advisor's away that weekend, can, uh, that, that day, can we do a different day? Every single time you bang an email back, that friction level is going up. And eventually, if you have too much friction, the client will just give up and they won't book in that first meeting or whatever it might be that you're trying to book in here. So friction there is high. With a transformed client experience, and I would imagine that a lot of you guys in the audience will probably be either thinking about doing this or will already be doing this, but there's an amazing tool that I keep on banging on about that I think most people are using nowadays, which is called Calendly. So client gets sent a Calendly link to book in the next meeting. Even something as small as that, not only does it save your team ages uh, for however much the monthly cost of Calendly is, but it's also so much nicer for the client. They can see what dates you're free. They can see when they're free. They can book it in. They get an automatic email. They get an automatic calendar invite. Everything is done automatically and it's so simple to use. And then it avoids that diary tennis that we're talking about before. Also, just to kind of add to this, if you want to, a really good thing that I've seen some people doing is sending a video. And I know that videos are scary. I know that, but this is what we're doing. We're moving to the next step. We're transforming things. We're getting better. Uh, and what I've seen some people doing is sending videos to uh, their clients from the financial planner, just summarizing their discussion. So as an example, when I bought a car last year, um, I, we, we got a video afterwards from the sales representative at the car place uh, and he just said it was really nice to see you guys today here's everything that we discussed here's what the actual um the, the, it looks like for you here's how you can purchase it etc 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 you could do exactly the same thing with your clients there's an amazing tool called video ask where you can just literally record on your phone send it to clients uh, they can ask questions they can engage with it and the idea with this again that with friction level is reducing because the more you show yourself the more you show that you actually care about this person the more you become personable the, the, the higher, the, sorry, the lower that friction becomes and the more they actually want to work with you. So right from the very start, you can see with just some tiny changes, which do actually have to be embedded into your process, but tiny changes that can leave a massive difference and make you look completely different to everybody else. On a similar note, in the pre-planning stage, before that first meeting, so discovery meeting, whatever we want to call it, most people call it the discovery meeting, you can call it whatever you want. 
Before that meeting, the likelihood is they've never been to a financial planner before. If they have, there's a reason they're coming to you because they are probably less than impressed with their previous financial planner. Most people haven't even worked with a professional before. Uh, most people haven't been to a professional services uh, person before. So they're really unsure about what that's going to be, what you're going to ask them, how it feels, what kind of questions you're going to be asking. Uh, and that's why what everybody else is doing here increases that friction because the client doesn't hear anything until they turn up on the day. They might get a reminder email or something like that, but we're talking a little bit deeper than that here. So what a few of the firms, a lot of the firms that I work with are, are, are doing in terms of a transformed experience is they're sending what's called a first meeting checklist or an information leaflet or something like that. Something really simple and short and quick that the client reads which outlines everything that they need to know and the instructions for the first call uh, or meeting. So what you need to bring, what you need to have a think about, even something like what questions we're going to ask in that first meeting. And what that does is it, first of all, reduces the amount of fear and fear and friction go hand in hand. It reduces the fear of that first meeting and it increases the confidence level. Uh, and also it shows them that you guys are professional and you think about everything uh, and it kind of sets up that client experience even better uh, for them after that as well. And the final one in the, I think it's the final one in the pre-planning stage, uh, is after that discovery meeting. So after that first meeting of the client where you've got all that juicy stuff about what they want to do with their lives, where their problems lie, where their challenges are, how much they've got, how much is going to be enough for them, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that is where, again, you can really, really show off to the clients. So what a lot of people do after this, and you know, again, it's kind of the standard way of doing things, is that the client gets a massive email with loads of attachments, too much information in there. It takes them ages to do. And with every single line in that email, the friction level is starting to increase because the barriers of their understanding and also wanting to work with you are actually either even subconsciously reducing with every line of that email. With the more stuff they've got to do, the higher the friction levels that they have. So a transformed experience where the outcome is exactly the same. In fact, it's even better, but it actually it reduces friction and reduces your time as well is I'm going to show you an example in a second of an after meeting summary PDF. Uh, so there's one firm I work with who send these, actually a few firms I work with who send these, and it's a one page or two page PDF that just explains everything that you would have done in an email, but it's in a nice branded nice looking professional PDF uh, instead. And you can put all sorts of different things in there. You can put videos and all that kind of stuff. What that does is it saves the amount of time that the client has to, first of all, read, but it's also much more digestible for them to take in. It's branded, it's professional, it looks cool, uh, and it's more appealing to clients. What you can also do is you can do either a loom or you can do a video ask again. I'm sorry for recommending so many videos here, uh, but you could do a loom with, with key actions following that discovery meeting and also perhaps a nice piece of information that you remembered. So even if it's something like something they've said they want to do in the future or what they wake up in, in, in the nighttime thinking or anything that those small kind of passing bits of information, if you can look out for those and note them down and then send them in a video afterwards, that is that shows first of all that you're listening, but also that 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 the, the, your service is actually something different to to what to what most people are doing. Uh, we've got Q and A there. I'll answer that at the end, uh, Jamie. I'll answer that question at the end. Just remind me to come back to you actually, because I'll probably forget. Uh, so this is an example of one of those after meeting summaries. So uh, this is from the guys at Transform. Quite nice uh, name for for today's. Uh, webinar after meeting summary so everything i've mentioned in there so what we discussed in our meeting one two three uh, how our charges work any next steps after that call uh, they've got a picture of angus in there as well and they've also got uh, a little button at the bottom which says about reading the brochure or booking in that next call all of this is dead simple to do dead quick it can be done by your team based on the meeting notes that you've taken in that call if you've got ai meeting notes you can just take them out of there chop them up copy them in and put them in here dead dead quickly uh, there's so many ways that you can do this to automate this in your process and it's so much faster than sending a massive email and it reduces that friction as well okay so next is the uh Sorry, it's not the last one in the in the pre-planning stage. The next one is the fact find. Now, this one's a bit of a kind of, um, I just chucked this one in there at the end just to kind of test a little bit. I know that most people have their fact find sorted nowadays in terms of they uh, you use like cash calc or uh, they use like a, a a different onboarding system or IO or whatever it might be to, to kind of get this information from clients. 
but we still come across sometimes firms who are either spending like a whole meeting in person with their clients um, asking this information. So what's your national insurance number? What's your gas and electric? How much do you spend on this every month? What's your income? All that kind of thing. The problem with that is that we find is that first of all, first of all, the client will tell you things that they think it is without doing any kind of research. So they'll say, oh, well, I think my gas and electric is 75 a month, but I'm not sure. And they'll tell you that. Uh, and then they'll go home and it's completely wrong. And then the, the whole financial plan, even though it's like a tiny piece of information, the whole thing can be wrong. Uh, and also, if you send them a spreadsheet or something like that afterwards, that friction level is just starting to increase with every cell that they have to complete. It looks boring and therefore it feels boring for them. And it's not really a nice client experience. So what we've done with a few firms is we've transformed that into an interactive video online digital fact find that is sent to them as homework afterwards that they complete at home in their own surroundings. It's nice and comfortable. They've got access to any information that they need. They can complete it at their own pace. But also what we've done is we've put videos in there from the team. So again, that personable level is increasing. Uh, they're getting used to you and the way that you talk. And also it looks really nice and professional for the clients to see the team there talking about what they might need to get from you. Also, what you can do with these kind of things is you can set it up so that the data automatically goes into your CRM system, depending on what you use. Uh, and so the team don't have to rekey and it automatically goes, goes into their file. It's just a nicer experience, not only for the client, but for your team uh, as well. So as an example of one of those, this is from the guys at SRB in Glasgow. Uh, they We did some filming with them. Uh, we got different members of the team to film different videos, bit of a potluck, and we just put them in uh, and the client fills it in and it even remembers their name. It branches based on different answers that they give. You can get really creative. You can put educational videos in there. It's just such a nicer client experience, even than sometimes filling in like those digital fact finds that we see all the time. It's a nicer, more personal, professional client experience uh, for the people you work with. Got another few Q and A's there. So again, I'll come to these at the end. Okay, so next we'll move to the planning stage. Hence the background has turned to pink. Um, so. This is the part where you actually start doing some work with your clients. Not that this, the past stuff wasn't work, but this is where we get into the juicy elements of your uh, process. So most people have what's called like a strategy meeting or a, I don't know, second meeting or whatever it is, where you kind of, uh, you look through the fact finances they've given. You've kind of done maybe a little bit of research now. Uh, you've maybe got some cash, cash flow that you can look through with clients. And you can build that financial plan live. So, in that strategy meeting, the client's getting dead excited because you're showing them what they can do and what they've got and where everything is and all the different objectives and scenarios that they've told you about they want to do. But then afterwards, often the client is left in silence whilst you go off and wait for, I mean, I'm not going to mention any big companies, but you go and wait for big companies to get back to you with certain information following a letter of authority. And it can take four, six, eight, however many weeks you're on the phone all the time to them, which is frustrating for you and your team. We're never going to get away from that. But all that time, the client is just sat there thinking, am I even still in, in a process of financial planning here? And it's not your fault, but the client can't differentiate you between the providers and they don't know who's difference in it. And you can't just blame the providers all the time. So we need to plug that gap with something to give them something in the meantime. So one firm that I'm working with has been really creative with this. And um, whilst I say I put one week in here, I think they do it a little bit differently. But whilst they're going through this process after the, the strategy meeting with clients, the planning team prepares a living, ongoing financial plan that explains the agenda of everything in their life. So where everything is and also keeps the client in the loop as well. So they've got like a bit on there where you can update where everything is. Uh, you can update different recommendations and actions that you might have throughout the planning process. I'm going to show you an example in a second, by the way. Uh, but what this does is, it, again, it plugs that gap of silence where the client is thinking, what am I waiting for here? Where is everything at, at the moment? It means they've got something to go back to all the time. Uh, so, for example, it's the guys at Finova Money, who I'd imagine a lot of you guys in the audience will have uh, come across. Uh, they they have this, we, they call it design and build, which is cool. And in there, they've got this kind of agenda where the client can click on the different areas uh, of their uh, financial plan and they'll get information about it. And this is being built 
whilst they're going through this process uh, with clients. So it's not something that they just get at the end. They're actually building this whilst they're going through this with clients uh, as well, which is a really nice way to do it. It's more professional and it gives the clients something not just at the end, but it gives them something tangible and value uh, uh, right, right from, not from the beginning, but right during that process. And if you can think about this from a friction point of view, again, waiting to hear back from you for six weeks, friction levels are almost at their peak. Something like this, where they can constantly check it and see everything that's updated and they're getting some value right from the very beginning, their friction levels are almost on the floor. There is no friction here because they're communicated with, they know what's going on, and it's a nice experience for them as well. And also what you can do with this is it is a financial plan document. So you can update this every year. It doesn't have to be a one and done. You can update this constantly and it's nice for clients to look at. They can have access to it. It's just awesome. Uh, we also, a lot of firms that we work with tend to have what's called like a, a presentation meeting. And this is where you present recommendations or give a suitability report, go through suitability report. Again, everybody does it differently, but we tend to find a pattern with this one. And what a lot of people do is they send a suitability report from the service team and a ton of emails on what different stuff means, what clients need to do, uh, what actions are required, where they need to sign, what application forms need to be completed, all that kind of stuff. If we could think about this in a transformed way instead, obviously we can still, we still need to send a suitability report. We're never going to get away from that. But what we can do is we can also do some stuff alongside it or kind of summarize it all a little bit easier so it's nicer for clients to digest friction levels decreasing so what one firm i'm working with they do a two-page plan summary which is sent to the client alongside the suitability report that just says yes go and read all this stuff it's in the file for you if you you know you have to read it please go and read it it's important but tldr too long don't read here's a one or two page financial plan that just summarizes everything that we're saying in that big longer report it's not getting away from you have to read this one to understand it but here's everything summarized for you in plain english so you can actually understand it better again this is an opportunity to send a video ask to clients just to kind of gauge their understanding of it so again two minute video just saying you know, lovely to meet you today. Um, just making sure that you understand everything that we've been through. Uh, here's the things that you need to action. Here's some things that we need you to do. Let me know if you're not comfortable with any of them. It doesn't need to be video ask. It be sent by Loom or WhatsApp or whatever it is. And then also the service team. So if, for example, if there's lots of things that the client has to either look at or engage with or do, it's quite nice for a service team to send like a quick Loom video, which can be done in five minutes, quicker than an email uh, to explain everything that they should know and everything that they should look at. And again, I know it's difficult. I know these things are scary. Videos are scary. Loom videos are less scary than everything else. Uh, but this is the all, again, what it's all about is transforming moving ourselves out of the comfort zone and improving that client service that we offer to people. So for example, uh, here's a two page plan uh, from the guys at Ruby Red. So they've actually got a little uh, video summary in the top right hand corner as well that the client can click on. It takes them through to a Loom video of the suitability report and their cash flow as well, which is really nice. Uh, James at Ruby Red has been doing these uh, and, and, and having some success with them. Uh, they've also got objectives, finances, overall summary and actions in there as well. Uh, so the client's basically can look at this, grasp what's going on, fine, it's all good, it looks like what we've discussed. If they want any more information, the suitability report is there for them to read when they fall asleep at night. They've also got uh, an example of a video ask here. So there's Scott um, from Fedova. So this is actually on their website, but just an example, this is what a video ask looks like. So they could, you know, you could record this on your phone, give them some options or give them a chance to get back to you with any questions, either video audio or they can send you a message uh, and and again it's nine seconds long this one uh, but you could just check in it just shows your face it's a much more personal nice experience for your clients to receive especially when friction levels are tending to be again at their highest because understanding is at the lowest there's so many things that you're saying to them that they just do not understand a nice little video just summarizing all can can really really make a difference so we're now at the post planning stage let me just check for time um I think we're doing okay. I think we'll get through this. So uh, next one is when client is onboarded. So for example, this is when you've imp implemented everything, when everything is set in place and the financial plan is done and they've become an ongoing client. What a lot of people do is they send an, a big email saying that everything is complete uh, and then the client is sat there thinking, what's next? Um, they, might get a, they might get mentioned in a 
in a call or a meeting with you, you might say what's going on next, but there's nothing really to back it up. There's nothing there saying what they actually are going to get in the next 12 months or a few years or whatever it might be. So a transformed client experience from this point, and it is important this, and, and a lot of people think, well, they're already a client, so why does it matter? Because this is the point when they're most likely to tell others about you. And this is the point where they're most likely to have what's called post-purchase dissonance. They're looking for things that they may have made a mistake on. They're looking for things that may make them think, have I made the right decision here? That's where friction can come from. Your aim is to get rid of that friction. So for example, what a transformed experience would look like is a video sent by the service team. Again, the planning team, whatever you want to call them, uh, just saying that everything is complete. Everything's now done. You're a client. Um, here's what the, the next 12 months looks like. Here's what we need from you to do next. What some firms do as well is they send a welcome pack email uh, with a calendar in there of what they should expect in the next 12 months. So informing them that, you know, in, in six months, we're going to do this. In nine months, we're going to be in touch to do this. In 12 months, we're going to do this. And this is where a lot of people struggle with their value of why are people paying an ongoing service to me? And I've heard it loads of times. I can't really communicate what they get for that amount every year. Yeah, peace of mind. Yeah, a uh, partner to help me get through all my goals and objectives. But it's hard to get that across with something like this. You can really say to clients, you know, this is what our service looks like. This is what you're paying that money for and set it out right from the beginning. And what they also do, one firm I'm working with, is they put uh, the team's details in there, who your service team is, who you're going to be working with, who to contact if anything goes wrong, who to contact if you've got any questions, and just making it really feel like they are actually a part of the family uh, rather than just, you know, a customer or a a, a person that works with the business. This makes them feel, again, communication levels high. It makes them feel like they're communicated with, they know what's coming up, they know what's going on. And then another opportunity is three months after the onboarding. So uh, in that first 90 days after a client is what we would call become a client, that's the opportunity when uh, it's, it's a great time to get a review from them or it's a great time to get something from them. So what everyone else is doing or most people are doing is, to be honest, nothing really. Uh, some firms do, and some firms are really good with this, but from the majority of firms that I see that are out there, nobody really takes advantage of this. So what a transformed experience is, and I'll show you an example of one of these in a second as well, is where they send a little card, a postcard in the post. Again, the physical element of this, I know it might sound old fashioned, but I can't remember the last time that, well, I can't remember because it was the other day, but before that, I can't remember the last time that I got anything really nice in the post with handwritten notes saying, you know, thank you or whatever it was, whatever it is. It is such a differentiator nowadays. It might be old fashioned, but it really, really does stand out. So what some people do is they send a handwritten note handwritten as well, uh, and a QR code to leave a review or to uh, a website page where they can refer their friends or anything like that. It's just putting in the client's mind that, you know, yes, we're, we've, we've given you a great service, but if you do know anybody else, then here's the details. Or if you could leave us a review to say how amazing the service has been, that'd be really good. And it's a good opportunity to do it. So for example, uh, these guys are Paradigm Norton, they send one of these, uh, well, they're starting to send these uh, to the clients. Hello, name, you know, written from the financial planner as well, or the service team, QR code in there to leave them a review, but you can have whatever you want on these. They're, they are not, you know, a, def a defined thing. You can put pretty much whatever you want onto these cards, but it's a really nice touch. I know it might sound trivial, but my, these, these really, really do uh, make a difference uh, when, when they're used properly. The final one, is the is uh, a month before the annual planning meeting. So if we can jump right forward to when they're due their annual planning with uh, meeting with you, uh, a month before, that's when we usually ask for information from them. So what everybody else is doing is they're asking clients to do five different things and five different emails. They've got one from the service team, one from the power planners, one from the financial planner asking them to do all this different stuff. If you can summarize all of that in a one PDF agenda to the client with a uh, what, what, what one firm I'm working with, they have an interactive video checklist to complete before uh, the meeting. So everything is in there. The client needs to know everything that they need to do is in there. So it's all in one place. It's all really nice. And just the final thing, when I say pre-meeting checklist, again, the guys at Intelligent Capital, they send this, they're, they're starting to send this cool type form that kind of gets from the clients what they're currently thinking about things. So in this case, it's how would you describe your current lifestyle, but it's also looking at what their legacy is going to be, uh, what they need to look at in the future, what they're really focused on at the moment. 
getting that information before the meeting so that in the meeting you can really focus on those things uh, and it becomes much more beneficial it becomes much more fruitful afterwards uh, so you can really really show off to your clients and you might be sat there thinking now you know what is the why have you just said all of this kind of stuff uh, and 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 i just wanted to hammer home the point that and again it's a bit of an uncomfortable point but your client does pay your bills uh, no matter what we what we might say, we sometimes forget this. We sometimes take this for granted, but the client experience is so important. And the best way to get new clients via referrals and recommendations has always been to to provide a service that they can refer. It's always been to provide a service that they're proud to tell other people about. They want to. They're dying to tell other people about because they have been so transformed by what you've given them. The best way to do that is but to offer a, an amazing client experience. So if you guys can get this stuff right, no matter what else you might be doing from, from a marketing perspective, uh, if you can get this stuff right, this will really, really start to change the way that other people talk about you and other people send clients your way. Uh, QR code there on screen. I think it works. I tested it earlier, but if you want to book a call with me, uh, you could just scan the QR code on screen there. It takes you to my Calendly, uh, where you can book a call in uh, with me. Hopefully there's not too much friction there. Uh, but yeah, um, that is all for today. So we do have some questions uh, in the Q&A. So let's have a look at these. So I'm just going to go chronologically because that's fair. So Jamie says, in your experience, do clients prefer a personalized video to a written and well-produced proposal document? That's a good question, Jamie. I don't think they need to be mutually exclusive, personally. I think you can really, I think it's always best practice to send a nicely produced and well-written um, proposal document to clients. So it's, there's an audit trail there, if nothing else. Uh, but also, you know, just summarizing it in a quick one-minute video alongside it to make sure that clients understand is a really nice uh, way to do it. Um, in the proposals that I send to clients personally, I always put a video of some examples of stuff that we've working in in there. It takes me about five minutes to do, bob it in there and it's ready to go for clients. So it's like a mixture of both uh, in there, which is, I think, nice for clients to engage with. Uh, but yeah, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think you can do both. Um, I personally would always prefer, and this might shock you, but a, a proposal document rather than a video, just because... It, I can actually look at it in my own pace rather than at your pace. Uh, Chris says, is there a solution anyone is aware of that uses AI, sorry, API slash open banking to import income and expenditure? Oh, I keep hearing about these things. Um, y yes, um, I'm not personally aware of any of these, Chris. But uh, there, there will be uh, probably a good place to ask this is either on LinkedIn or in the next gen community. Um, so I'll probably check in there. Uh, Brian's just said IO offers it. So maybe check with them. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's loads of stuff going on in the fintech space at the moment. There's loads of people working on this. So I don't think it'll be very long, especially with AI and stuff like that coming. <sighs> I said I wasn't going to mention the word AI today, but I've done it now. So never mind. Um, Anonymous says, can I have some more information on this? Uh, what tech is used for this, et cetera? So the majority of stuff that I've shown you today has been either on Canva, uh, Typeform, or Video Ask. Um, there's a few different things that, that were in there that weren't on those three things, but the majority, uh, Loom is another one. The majority of things are either on any, any of those uh, three different systems. Uh, what format is, Daniel says, what format is this living financial plan doc in? Good question. So again, this is probably where um, we start to lose some people, but uh, these are in Canva. So I actually have been trying to tell people that Canva is easier to use than Microsoft Word or PowerPoint for a few years now. Some people are getting used to it, which is great. So the guys at Finova, for example, they're using it uh, and they're loving it. Um, and that's what it's built in. And that's where you can start to put those videos in. You can start to send links to clients instead of, um, you know, PDFs and Word documents and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so Canva is really, really good for this kind of stuff. I know most people think about it from a social media perspective, but it's really good for this kind of stuff as well. I sound like a salesman. Uh, Matt says, that looks awesome. Who provides that tool, the living financial plan? So again, I think that's probably answered uh, by what I've just said. Uh, Matt, so that is Canva. Um, again, what we do for clients is we build the templates in Canva and they fill them out for their their clients in Canva afterwards. Uh, thank you for stepping in, Brian. 
Uh, let's get that one done. And then final, oop, I was going to say final question. Uh, Emma's just put one in as well. So Anonymous says, I don't know if you want me to read this out, but I'm going to anyways. Uh, Dan, I'm a younger lad working at a firm that is old fashioned, full of paper and full of friction, as you put it. I'm desperate to have us pivot to a journey uh, that more like this today. What's the one most important thing that I can focus on pushing at my firm? Oh, that is a big question. I think, to be honest, the 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 pre the pre meet the pre planning stuff is are the low hanging fruits. I think they're the bits where you can start to. I mean, to, for example, if you went to your firm, I don't know the firm, but if you went to your firm and said, "Oh, this amazing living financial plan doc and this interactive fact find and all that kind of stuff," it, you probably lose them as start as as soon as you start to say certain words. You might not, but from my experience, you probably will. Because they are bigger, bigger projects that take a bit more time and a bit more kind of revolution in the client journey. Whereas the low hanging fruits of integrating Calendly rather than sending massive amounts of emails, uh, you know, sending really, really short videos afterwards, they're things that can be done in seconds and implemented with hardly any cost at all. Uh, and they are the things that are likely to leave the most impact, especially for new clients as well. So if I was going to say from today, pushing with them it's that pre-planning stuff when a client is getting onboarded uh, i think that's where we can probably start to to leave an impact on that firm emma says uh our slides being sent out uh yes i'll send them tomorrow i think with a recording uh to everybody who's uh registered for this michelle says we love canva for client reports uh thank you for the support michelle Brian says, very informative meeting. Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you, Brian. Thanks very much for spending time with us this afternoon. And then Matt says, I would get them onto Calendly first. That's where I started with my firm. Easy tech to understand and really quickly becomes beneficial. And then you can add the automated emails, et cetera. That's exactly what I should have said, Matt. You've answered it better than me. So um, whoever that was, you've got Matt to thank uh, for that one. And then Wesley says, thanks, Dan. Awesome content. I've booked a call with you. Thank you very much, Wesley. Jamie says, thank you. Uh, so I think that's all we've got time for today. Uh, again, thank you so much to everybody for joining us this afternoon. I will be sending out a recording tomorrow. So anything that you've missed today, uh, don't worry, you'll be able to catch it tomorrow. Uh, like I said, if you do want to have a chat with me, just book in a call or just uh, bob me an email uh, and we'll we'll chat then. But again, thank you so much to everybody for joining us this afternoon. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week and we will see you all uh, very, very soon. <laughs>